Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. So for Valentine's Day, I thought I would do a special episode about the romances on the Waltons. I want to start with the first and my favorite romance on the Waltons, which was John and Olivia. They were just so perfect together. They had obviously tremendous love, but they were able to support each other through everything that each of them was going through. They fought at times, but you never questioned that everything was going to work out between them. And I loved the teasing and the bantering and the twinkle in the eye, the obvious love, not only between John and Olivia, but also the real life love between Michael and Ralph, who really were just so close throughout their entire time on the Waltons and beyond. Some of my favorite scenes with John and Olivia were at the seashore when they built sand castles and, and, and played and uh, when they tried to go away on a honeymoon and it didn't work out and they ended up taking the children. There were just so many beautiful moments. And then of course, when they remarried and uh, renewed their vows. So that was wonderful too. The next relationship to me was Zeb and Esther. They were married for 50 years plus, And in fact, we saw them celebrate their 50th anniversary in the episode, The Heritage. Um, they had just another adorable relationship. Uh, the way grandma was always calling him, you old fool. And grandpa was always teasing grandma and trying to you know, get her to uh, uh, loosen up. But you also really saw, when it came down to it, the tremendous bond between the two of them when Grandpa sat up all night outside the hospital. And when Grandma, on his birthday after the heart attack, was so determined to get him moved outside where the mountain air would heal him. So, And of course, the beautiful, beautiful moments in when Grandma comes home after her stroke and that they had that last episode together before we lost Will. So one of my favorite, favorite relationships and love stories on the Waltons. For the Walton children, most of the children ultimately ended up with a husband, wife, or significant other by the end of the series. For Mary Ellen, there was Kurt, who she married in season five. And then later on, towards the end of the series in, um, the ninth season and then in the reunion specials mary ellen married jonesy and he appeared in later reunion specials and we had the sense that that was a relationship that was going to last jason he ultimately married tony who at first it seemed like they weren't going to be a good match but ultimately they ended up to be the perfect match. And in real life, John Walmsley was married to Lisa Harrison, who played Tony Hazelton. Uh, they later divorced, and John has now very happily remarried. But for Tony and Jason, they married. They had about five children, all named after various different music uh, legends. So we uh, felt that that was going to, again, be an enduring marriage and family. Ben and Cindy were just a solid couple right from the beginning. He brought her home. He surprised everybody. They eloped and they had their moments, uh, particularly when um, they weren't dealing well together in the beginning and Ben was trying to be too domineering and ultimately grandma resolved that with the famous broom and <laughs> showing Cindy that she should just take a broom to Ben when he was out of hand. Uh, so that launched... Uh, a very workable give and take in the relationship of Ben and Cindy. For Erin, in the ninth season, we did see her meet uh, Paul Northridge. And then in the first of the reunion specials, she married Paul Northridge. Unfortunately, in later reunion specials, we came to find out that it had not worked out and they had ultimately divorced, but she did have children. And we hope that Erin went on to find another very happy marriage. Elizabeth had her longtime boyfriend, Drew. And in the last reunion special, Drew does uh, propose marriage to Elizabeth. And that was a wedding I would have liked to have seen. Uh, we never had a chance to do that reunion and marry Elizabeth and Drew, but it, that marriage exists in my mind forever. 
Jim Bob was the only one who never was engaged or married or really had uh, what we would consider his significant other. So we still have future hopes for Jim Bob. And last but not least, of course, was John Boy, who celebrated his wedding in one of the reunion specials when he married Janet. And this really represented Earl Hamner's marriage to his wife, Jane. Uh, so that was lovely to see. And then, of course, they had their twins, which Mary Ellen delivered in the final Walton reunion, A Walton Easter. Of course, the Waltons weren't the only ones who enjoyed their romance and love stories on the Waltons. Uh, some of my favorites that I wanted to touch on were Verdi and Harley. I mean, how perfect were those two for each other? And Lynn Hamilton and Hal Williams were just two of the sweetest, kindest, most wonderful people we ever had the honor to work with on the Waltons. Also along the way, Ike and Corabeth, and now there was a marriage of opposites, but somehow they made it work, and I loved the ongoing dynamics of Ike and Corabeth. We also had Reverend Fordwick and Miss Hunter. Uh, of course, there was a little triangle involved there when John Boy thought he was in love with Miss Hunter, but ultimately those two married and um, I delivered Rosemary's baby as well. That sounds weird, but <laughs> it was uh, lovely to see that relationship. And it would have continued, but John Ritter, of course, got the series Three's Company, so he left the Waltons to go pursue his very successful comedy career. Next relationship uh, that I wanted to touch on was Epp and uh, Sarah. Epp Bridges, our sheriff, and Sarah Griffin, who was uh, supposed to be someone he had known in the, in the war, who came back to Walton's Mountain, and they rekindled that love affair, and they also married on the show. Then we had Yancey and Sissy, another <laughs> just comic, comedy relief uh, relationship, but they seemed very well suited, and Robert Donner and Sissy Wellman were actually married in real life, so what perfect casting. <laughs> then there was Rose and Stanley. This happened in season nine after some back and forth, uh, but they really were quite adorable together and we were happy to see them finally have their happy ending when they married. Uh, Anne and Curtis Norton, of course. Um, the family was instrumental in getting the two of them together and we saw them in a couple of episodes. And then of course they adopted the young Stevie and became a real family, the three of them together. Uh, we had Uncle Cody and Cordelia. Now that had its bumps along the way. Cordelia had been many times married and people were concerned, but ultimately um, Uncle Cody knew exactly uh, what he was getting into and believed that they shared an actual, real, legitimate, sincere love and they married and I want to believe, like all the rest, that they were very happy together. Then young Olivia and Bob, who of course married on the mountain, but then sadly, uh, Bob was killed in a car accident. So young Olivia was left widowed way too young. And hopefully we'd like to also think that she went on to find another wonderful love in her life. We had Vera and Wade Walton who went through some, some bumpy times along the way, but again, they found their way when they moved back to the mountain to go back to uh, who they really were and their roots and what made them happy as a couple and the life that they loved. So happy to see that happen. Then there were the, um, the didn't quite work out relationships, of course, Miss Mamie and Ashley Longworth. Uh, but how prominent and present did we feel that relationship throughout the, the series? And, I think it would have been fun to uh, perhaps have a spin-off that uh, took Miss Mamie, Miss Emily and Ashley on their own journey that had a happy ending. And then there was the alluded to romance between Miss Mamie and Porter Sims that I think was mostly in Miss Mamie's mind, but it gave her some comfort. So those were the relationships, the love stories on the Waltons that I want to touch on here for Valentine's Day. I'll be back uh, soon in another episode with all of the romances along the way. And we'll track with some of uh, those uh, 
those various different relationships that uh, members of the family found themselves engaged in on the path to their happy ending. So I wish all of you a very happy Valentine's Day. I hope that uh, you are enjoying the day and a celebration with your loved one, your significant other, and I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.